This video shall demonstrate as to how to elicit the deep tendon reflexes of the lower extremities. As discussed previously in a video on upper limb DTRs, the physiology of a deep tendon reflex involves striking the tendon of a muscle, thus creating a slight passive lengthening of the muscle spindles. This in turn causes reflex contraction of the muscle by stimulating the alpha motor neurons which directly supply it. Also as discussed in the last video on upper limb DTRs, while eliciting any deep tendon reflex, the movement should not be on the shoulder. Rather, there should be free movement at the wrist joint. Now coming on to the knee jerk, which is also referred to as the patellar reflex or the patellar jerk. The root value is L3, L4 and we elicit the contraction of the quadriceps femoris muscle. The nerve tested is the femoral nerve. To demonstrate it, one must expose the whole lower limb of the child from below the umbilicus. In an adolescent female, however, you can expose from below the groin. And it can be elicited in two positions. First is the supine position, which is the commoner one, and second is the sitting position. In the first method, that is eliciting the reflex in the supine position, we support one of the legs under the knees by left hand and raise it by 10 to 30 degrees making an angle of about 45 degrees from the bed and then tap the patellar tendon and this should elicit extension of the knee due to contraction of the quadriceps muscle. See this video. What is important to remember here that you can also see and even feel the contraction of the quadriceps femoris muscle and here lies the importance of e properly exposing the child. So many a times the residents commit this mistake in their examination spe uh, especially. They do not expose the patient properly and elicit the start eliciting the knee jerk and the examiner knows that uh, understands that the student does not know how to do it because he is not exposed the quadriceps femoris muscle. He is not looking for the contraction of the quadriceps femoris muscle. The second method which involves making the child sit at the edge of the bed allowing his knees to swing freely. We tap the patellar tendon in this manner. Now the advantage of eliciting reflex in the sitting position is that especially if the child is cooperative is that you can actually place your left hand that is the free hand on the quadriceps femoris muscle and feel for the contraction of the muscle. Now ankle jerk, the root value is S1 and we are testing the medial popliteal nerve. The muscular contraction which we see is of gastronomius soleus muscle. In this, to elicit this, the exposure should be from above the knee joint. To elicit it, it uh, the, hips are, the hip is flexed and internally rotated. Remember when we internally rotate the hip, the hip moves extern, moves slightly outwards. We then flex and dorsiflex the foot and tap the tendo Achilles and this should elicit the contraction of the gastronomia soleus muscle and consequent plantar flexion like in this video. So the deep tendon reflexes are graded as per the severity of the response from 0 to 4 plus. 0 is no response, plus 1 is diminished. Both these can be seen in the lower motor neuron lesions like in Nyabari syndrome and other lower motor neuron lesions. Grade 2 is a normal response. Grade 3 is a brisk or exaggerated response. And grade 4 is clonus or marked exaggeration. Grade 3 and 4 are seen in upper motor neuron lesions. So what is clonus? Clonus is a series of alternating contractions which if sustained suggest a marked degree of reflex hyperexcitability. So to elicit the ankle clonus, the child should lie supine with hips relaxed and flexed and the knees and ankle flexed at 90 degrees to each other. Now grasp the foot from the plantar surface and quickly dorsiflex it like this.
Actually, this patient was so hyperreflexic that merely holding the foot in order to position it elicited the clonus. To elicit the patellar clonus, on the other hand, we grasp the upper end of patella by one hand between the thumb and the index finger as shown in the image and place the other hand below the knee joint to stabilize it. We then give a sudden sharp downward thrust to the patella holding the downward pressure at the end of movement like in this video. This patient does, did not have a CNS pathology but have only demonstrated the methodology of eliciting the patellar clonus in this video. I hope you have been able to understand these reflexes and the methods to elicit it. Thank you so much for a patient watching and please do share the knowledge. Thanks a lot.